ready-made maths, YouTube mathematics training videos. Teaching assistant and teacher training in mental mathematics. We're now into day six, week two, and today we're going to be looking at MC Rapper Coder number part one. This week is a development and extension of all of the work that we did in week one. In week one, we learnt six cool strategies for mental addition. We're going to put all those together this week and we're going to play lots of rapper code and number games. What we're then going to do on day three is just look at some general fun tips and tricks, just little tricks that we've not really mentioned. They're not strategies uh, as such, but things that it's really worth knowing that you can just apply at any time just to get a, a simple quick trick to get the answer uh, to a mental addition. On day four this week, we're going to have more of a, I suppose, a, a year one to three um, uh, session with a little bit of key stage two uh, input, but generally, how do we learn number bonds? During the double and adjust uh, day last week, we actually had a few little activities on learning doubles, but on the number bonds day, there was so much other content, we didn't actually specifically look at how to learn number bonds. So we're going to have loads of just little uh, visuals and images and uh, mental and oral games uh, and songs that will help children uh, to learn their number bonds. The final day this week, day five, we're just going to play a lot of games. Uh, it's going to be a number of games um, day where we're going to be looking at dice uh, and digit card games. Good morning. Welcome to week two uh, of the Ready Made Mathematics YouTube training. I hope you enjoyed all of week one's videos. Today, I'm quite excited about what we're going to be doing today. Um, I've got a brand new character uh, that I'm going to introduce to you uh, that I mentioned at the end of last week. Uh, and what we're going to be doing really this week is looking at all the stuff we practiced last week and putting it all together and just playing a lot of games. I think, we'll, you know, last week we looked at different strategies for mental calculation. We looked at lots and lots of visual resources and apparatus and how to actually make the calculations. What we're going to be doing uh, this week is taking all of that knowledge that we learned and putting it together uh, in a game form. I just want to take you over to the, uh, the board uh, just to kind of go over what we, we looked at last week. Uh, now, I've changed the order. Uh, we started last week with uh, the number bond strategy. We then developed that uh, into... Um, double and adjust. We then moved into round and adjust. On Thursday, on, sorry, on day four, um, we looked at partitioning and counting on, and then we rounded it all together on the fifth day with a strategy called manipulate the calculation. Uh, as you can see uh, from the titles, MC, rapper, code, a number, uh, we're going to introduce to you uh, later on. So I hope you'll be with me all week this week. As I've mentioned before, please, if you get the chance, subscribe to the YouTube channel, uh, Ready Made Maths. Follow me on Twitter at ReadyMade Maths, where I'm going to be putting links uh, to all the resources and all the other videos uh, that are coming up. Uh, and also check out uh, the ReadyMade Maths website, www.readymademaths.co.uk. Okay, looking forward to uh, what we're about to do today, uh, and I hope that you'll be able to uh, join in uh, and play as many of the games as possible. Just to reinforce what we looked at last week, uh, and you can look at the, the, the thought bubbles uh, on this particular um, slide. And that's what we should be thinking about when we're faced with any calculation. My first thing is, can I make it and can I draw it? That's part of the CPA approach where we kind of emphasise, do we understand what the calculation is asking us to do? Can I make it or can I draw it? Sometimes both. Um, once we understand the calculation and we're able to explain it, and we looked at lots of examples of that last week, we then move on to, can I do it in my head and do I need a jotting? So question one, can I make it? Or can I draw it? Question three, can I do it in my head? Do I have a mental strategy that's going to work? The example you can see there is, oh, it's 45 and 19. I'm going to add 20. Take one. So pulling back all those things we learned last week. Question number four, do I actually need a jotting? What we also discussed last week was sometimes we can just do the whole thing straightforward in our head. Sometimes we need to put a little jotting in place to help um, support our thinking. This example here is a number line, 57 and 20 and 5, when eventually children will just go 57 and 20 is 77 and 5 is 82. So that general principle that we've worked on all last week is looking at the thinking skills for mental arithmetic. We did do the visuals, we backed it up, but then it's, can I do it in my head and do I need a jotting uh, to help me out? Just to really quickly recap last week, um, this is what we looked at uh, last week. We looked at the five different strategies um, over the first four days and then pulled them all together uh, into manipulate the calculation. Uh, obviously, if you were following uh, last week's training videos, you understand what each of those uh, terms mean. 
it might be worth if you've missed any of the sessions last week just go back and have a look if there's any of those that you missed just to make sure uh, you understand uh, each of those uh, each of those terms what they actually mean and what the strategy they're referring to actually is just a quick refresher before we move into uh, the main content of today just got to have a look uh, at the strategies uh, that we were looking at last week i'm just going to take a number from the board uh, let me just try and find one that's kind of somewhere in the middle there we go 66 and take 66 from the board uh, I just want to look at 66 and just think about each of these strategies. If I wanted to do 66 and round and adjust, then I'd probably look at a number such as 29. 66 add 29, I'd take the 29, but instead of adding 29, I'd add 30, which gets me to 96, and I'd take 1. 66 add 30, 96, take 1, 95. If I wanted to try the partition strategy, I could pretty much do that with any of the numbers on there. Let's just take 27 for example. 60 and 20 is 80. 6 and 7, that's a near double, is 13. 80 and 13 is 93. That's the, the simple partition strategy. Um, counting on, that's generally done with one whole number and then count the two separate parts, or it's done with multiples of 10. So I could take a multiple of 10, uh, try to find one on there, well there is 10, 60, oh there's 50. So 60, uh, 66 add 50, we just count on the 10s, 6 10s and 5 10s, 11 10s, so that's 116. Or, a two-part step, we could do 66 add 21. 66 add 20 is 86, add 1, that is 87. Uh, and that's the third strategy. Double and adjust, I'm trying to see a, a near double um, for, for 66. Probably the nearest one is 63. Uh, for that one, I would probably just, if, you, if you're going to do a near double, uh, you could double 63 and then just add another 3. So double 63 uh, is 126, and another 3 uh, is 129. Probably a better one for that one would be a, a 65 and 66. Double 65 is 130, uh, add one. That moves us on to the final one, number bonds, which is probably my favourite of all of them. I always look for number bonds uh, whenever I'm seeing calculations. I've got 66 here, straight away I've spotted a 64. That's 120 and 10. Any other fours? 144, even better. You've got uh, four tens and six tens, four ones and six ones, 100, 200 uh, and 10. Alternatively, I can try and find another number that works with the 66 in the in the tens. So 66 could go with 48. 60 and 40 is 100, 8 and 6 is 14. So what we're doing all the way through is looking for numbers and finding appropriate strategies uh, that go with them. The only one I've got left is manipulate the calculation. And that's the one that we looked at uh, at the end of last week when we just changed the calculation to make it easier. So if I did, for example, have 66 and 27, and I wanted to make it easier, I'll just pass 3 over. So I'll say, I don't want 27, I'd rather have 30. I'll pass 3 over, end with 30 and 63. 63 and 30 is 93. What we're going to do today is look at all of those strategies together uh, as part of the games that we're going to be playing. Last week, we did have a look at the visual calculation policy. Uh, we generally looked at the abstract versions uh, of the policy last week, uh, the ones on the right hand side. But as you can see uh, on this particular slide, uh, for those first three strategies, manipulate the calculation, round and adjust and partition, what you can see there is a kind of um, poster version of what we looked at last week. What does manipulate the calculation look like visually? Well, we start with 16 on nine. We're not gonna do it that way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pass one over from the 16 uh, and we've created a much easier calculation of 15 add 10. On the right hand side, you can see that one uh, for 45 add 19. Moving down, what does round and adjust look like visually? And that's what we did last week. My strategy for adding nine is simple and it's fun. My strategy for adding nine is add 10 and take one. You can see visually one 10 added and a one removed. So 45 add nine is 54. On the right hand side, you can see that as a, as a, as a slightly more abstract jotting 45 add 20. Subtract one for adding 19. The third version you can see is partitioning. How do we partition visually? Well, we get the base 10 out again. We do a 40 and a 20, we do a three and a one. Moving over uh, to the uh, right hand side, we do 40 and 80 and we do five and two. Partitioning is the, is the default strategy uh, that we can use for any calculation, even if we don't spot uh, any of the others. Counting on, as we mentioned last week, that's generally multiples of 10. So you can see there 45 add 20, where we add uh, two tens to give us 65. Even there, you can see how the, the 60 has been spaced out into that five and a bit, 50 and 10. Moving over, you can just see that as a straightforward thought bubble. 
double and adjust. We've used Numic on there as the visual. What is seven at eight? It's double seven plus one. You can see uh, how that's been represented. Uh, that will give us obviously uh, 14 and one, which is 15. On the right hand side, a more complicated mental one, double 45 plus one uh, gives us 45 plus 46 equals 91. Last but not least, what does number bonds look like visually? And we did loads of this last week, lots of visuals for number bonds. Again, we've used Numic on there. Three plus four plus seven. Let's put that three and seven together. A number bond. They add together with the four, uh, and that gives us a total of 14. On the right hand side, it's 45 and 95, where this time the number bond isn't five and five, but 95 and five. 40 plus 100 equals 140. I just thought I'd show you all these, uh, you know, six examples, just as a refresher, because obviously we did a lot last week that we went through. It's really important that we have a chance to reflect on all those six strategies and make sure that they make sense to us. So that's why I've you know, included this at the start of this week. Well, our first little game we're going to play today is just a, a kind of wrap a code and number uh, mix and match game, where what we're going to do is roll six dice, and we're going to do it visually. This is a really nice one for children in year one, to get them into wrapper code a number, but through uh, a visual. So I'm going to roll six dice. I've rolled. I'm going to call, um, in fact, I'm, if I roll a 10, I'm going to roll that one again. So that's obviously, that's just a straightforward uh, number. So I've got seven, five, three, three, two, and nine. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to pause the video for a second. Uh, a, and we're going to actually make each of those numbers with egg boxes. So let's pause the video now. This is quite a nice little game to play with Key Stage 1. We've asked them now to make up the six numbers that they've rolled. It could be eight numbers, it could be it could be ten numbers. We've chosen six to begin with. What they'd hopefully have done is started with a box of ten, remove the one uh, to get us to a nine. Um, or, obviously alternatively, just, just fill them up. What I'm going to challenge them to do, and I'm going to challenge you to do as well, is I'm going to let the uh, let, the, let the video just, just kind of focus on the, on the numbers now. And what I want you to do is look at, can I find a near double? Can I find any number bonds? Can I see any pure doubles? Can I see any round and adjusts? Can I just see any way that I can add those numbers up really quickly by putting different numbers together? So we'll let the video just pause for a second on there. Alternatively, we can look at the first two and think, no, I'm not going to do a number bond, I'll do a near double. I've got a five and a seven, that's double five plus two. I look over here, I'm going to manipulate the calculation. I've got an egg box over here with nine in, well, I might as well make a ten. So again, straight away, put that in there, and I've got uh, a brand new ten. I've got that one over there on its own. I think the best thing to do with that one is to put it with one of the other uh, boxes, which then gives me uh, another near double. Uh, I can now see I've got a ten here, I've got a twelve, so I'm going to move them around. So I can see I've got my twelve and my ten. Twelve and ten is twenty-two, and four is twenty-six. Uh, and 3 is 29, or 22, I can actually, if I want to, look at those together uh, as a 7. So 22 and 7, that is 29. We're just playing with numbers. Uh, encourage the children just to play. How many ways can they see, uh, the, you know, the, the different number bonds uh, and so on? Make number bonds up, make near doubles up, manipulate the calculation uh, and see what we end up with. And, as my daughter just pointed out to me, which I didn't even see myself, we've actually got this 12 over here in three spaces, so why don't we just manipulate that calculation? 12, add the 3. Straight away, we've got a brand new 10. What we've now got is we've got, if we move the whole thing around, like that, we've got 10, 20, 25, and 4 makes 29. And you can even see now that it's one less than 30. Really nice way of building those numbers together from what at the start looked like uh, just a random uh, set of numbers. Moving this activity into maybe into year one or year two, I want to do the same thing, but much, much quicker now. Let's play, let's play Rapper Code and Number, but this time with Numicon. I'm now going to roll eight dice. And I'm going to get each of those. I put them in order again. I've got a two, uh, I've got a three. I've got um, a zero, which I'll roll again. That's my ten, that's a five. I've got a four over here. So I've got two, three, four, five, two sixes. Got another five there. And I've got an eight. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get each of those pieces. Two. Three, four, two fives, a six, a six, and an eight, six, six, and eight. So I've now got a nice range of Numicon pieces. They could be random or they could be in order, it really doesn't matter. Similar activity before. Can we manipulate the calculation? Can we use wrapper code and number? How can we get the total of those numbers really quick? Introduce the timer. What we're going to do now is we're going to see how quickly, this, this is what the children will do, how quickly can we find the total of those by using our uh, number bond or wrapper code and number uh, strategies. 
Are we ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, we do go. Okay. <laughs> We've got the eight and the two. Number one to ten. We've got the six and the four. And another number one to ten. We've got the five and the five. Number one to ten. And we'll finish off with six and three. Stop. Oh, here we go. How long did that take? Minus a few seconds. <laughs> that took 14 seconds. Yeah, so we stopped sitting there at 16.06, oh, but 14 seconds to so it, as it finished. the total of 39. Brilliant. I'm going to start uh, an extended version. I'm going to use 20 sided dice and do exactly the same thing. Let's see how quickly we can do this. So we've now got a 1. Okay, we've got a 17. Let's put them in any old order. 1, 17. So for 17, I'm going to get a 10 uh, and a 7 and put that there. We've got a 20. I'm going to get myself. Um, two tens. I might have to space this out a little bit. Uh, I've got a 19. Okay, so that's a 10 uh, and a 9. So I'm going to put my 19 there. Um, I've got an 8 and I've got another 19. So there's my 8 and there's my other 19. Okay, I've got my 19s there. I've got a 4 and I've got a 16. So there's my 4 and there is my 16. Now, just have a look at that one, move the rows out the way there. Again, it's going to be a quick timed activity. How quickly? I think I might change the um, the 20 at the end. Uh, I think 20 is a bit, a bit too obvious, so I'll change the 20 to a 17. I've got 20 to a, to a, to a 9, right. Change the 20 to a 9. So, we're going to see how long will it take us to work out the total of these numbers. And you can see the two pictures here, uh, the numbers that we started off with and the numbers that we created. I'd like to look at picture one, then look at picture two and try and see what strategies have been used and how we're then going to get the complete total uh, of all the different numbers. Just uh, pause the video, uh, have a quick look uh, at the link between those two pictures. We should hopefully have seen is that initially the 19 has been put with the 1 to make the 20. That's the second uh, picture that we have over here. That one here is the 16 from there that's been put with the 4, again, to make another 20. We've then taken this 8 and this 9 to do a double and adjust. Double 8 is 16 and 1 is 17. And then uh, that left us with a 19, which is over here. Um, and it also left us with... 17 which is over here the strategy we actually employed for that one uh, was to take one from there to pass it over here to make that a 20 and the 20 is here and obviously because we've removed one we've changed that now uh, for a 16 so rather than having uh, 17 and 19 which we had, uh, had at the beginning there's a 17 and there's the 19 we've just passed one over uh, and now you can see here we've got 16 plus 20 or at the top there's my 16 and there's my 20. From that point, I can go 20, 40, 60, 77, 87, uh, and 6, which is 87, and 3, and 3, is 93. As we've just seen, mental calculation and all calculation does start with a picture. It's the main part of the CPA approach. Uh, lots of little examples there. We just uh, looked at a few ourselves, but asked the children just to use Eggbox's Numicom Base 10 and Abacus's create those calculations so they can see how they work and then start to develop them as mental strategies. I'll just pause just for a second, let you have a look at those. And again, if you're working with children in class, just use calculations like these and let them show you why it works as well as uh, obviously just using it as a mental strategy. What we're now gonna do is a year three version of the same activity with the visuals. Uh, we're gonna make four two digit numbers. I'm gonna roll uh, four sets of dice so I want to roll the first one, which is 56, um, I've rolled 87, I've rolled, oh, I don't want to zero, I've rolled 84, and I've rolled 74, okay, I'm going to put those numbers together, 56, 74, 87, and 84, and what we're going to do now is we're going to make each of those numbers with the sweet counter um, resources, just pause the video while I make those please. Right, so I've made those numbers up. I know this isn't more of a, a visual game, but again, it's really important children get that visual first. And again, we're just gonna see what are the best strategies for adding these up. 
Am I going to round and adjust? Am I going to manipulate? Am I going to see a double or a number bond? <clears throat> Just take a look at those numbers there. We've got a 74 and a 56. Does anything stand out there with 74 and 56? And then we've got an 87 and an 84. So again, we can play around uh, with those any way you want. There's lots and lots of ways to do this. Just pause the video, have a quick look, and then we'll come up with a solution. The first thing I spotted, I've got my 56 here, and I've got my 74. There's that number bond straight away. So if I take these four over here, one, two, three, four, I've created a number bond to 10, so I can exchange those 10 ones. Let's take those out of the way now, and exchange them straight away for another 10. So I've now got a much easier uh, 70 plus 60. So I'm going to deal with that one shortly. And now move down to the other numbers. I'll just bring these over here. Um, 87 and 84. We can see a near double straight away. We're, we're, you know, we've got a double 80, 160 there. We've got a 7 and we've got a 4. We can do 7 and 4 is 11 and just do it as a partition. But I love the idea of just manipulating it a little bit and passing one over. What I've now got is 86 and 85. Uh, if I want to use that idea of double five again, then I can see there I've got a double and a just. So I can probably get this answer, uh, to the, you know, the, the total answer, uh, quite easily. So I'm looking down here now, and I've got um, 80, and 80 is 160, and I've got another 10 there, which is 170, 171. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 100, that's 50, and 50 is 100. I'm going to replace that with a sum of 100 sweets, yes. I've then got 70, which is 50, 60, and again we replace those with another 10, 170, 1, that's my first uh, numbers uh, checked out. What I've then got up here, I've moved the dice out of the way now, uh, for the time being, I've then got 70 and 60, which again is a double and a just, double 60 is 120, and 10 is 130, or double 50 is 100, add my 30. I can definitely take my hundreds there. Now I know it's 130. I can replace those 10 tens with 100. So I've now ended up beautifully with 130 and 170. What a number bond. There we go. They go there. They get replaced by another 100. And we actually end up with the total at the end of 301. It actually turned out really, really well. There's probably loads and loads of ways we could have done that. And again, you don't have to do it visually, but children really enjoy that manipulation. And what it allows them to see is how much you can do with a number. Once you can see it as a visual, you can play around with it, you can move it in different ways, and then you can turn it into a calculation on the board. You've probably seen this um, acronym or this mnemonic as we've been um, working through uh, the session so far. Mental addition, who can help? Well, we've practiced the strategies, we've introduced the strategies to the children, and what we now want to do is have a character that's going to help us. Once those strategies are secure, can we manipulate the calculation? Can we partition, count on, spot the number bonds, spot the near doubles, round and adjust? Well, let's introduce a character now who will help the children remember the strategies, who can also help teach them, and then more importantly, can help reinforce them. The character is the maths rapper, MC Rapper Coder Numbo. I think we've kept uh, everybody waiting long enough now uh, for the introduction of, as promised last week, the maths wrapper. What we're going to be doing for the rest of this session is we're going to be actually doing specific rapper coder number games that are going to be introduced by the man himself, MC Rapper Coder Number. Hello, I am Rapper Coder Number, the maths wrapper, and I'm going to be taking you through six cool strategies for a mental addition. Rapper Coder Numbo is a character that I use on training courses and more often uh, in class to basically introduce each of those strategies to the children and then ask the children to choose the best one. I know a lot of schools up and down the country have devised their own versions uh, of Rapper Coder Numbo uh, and there is uh, a Rapper Coder Numbo song also on the Number Fun portal uh, that we'll look at uh, later in either today uh, or tomorrow's session. Just going to introduce you though to the Rapper Coder Numbo introductory rap that's going to introduce all the strategies to you. Hope you enjoyed the little introduction to the slightly older version of MC Rapper Coder Numbo. Anybody can play the part. Um, once we've got used to playing that part, it's then the idea of I shout out MC, manipulate the calculation. Ra, round and adjust. Pa, partition. Co, count on. Da, double and adjust. Numbo, 
number bombs. I generally you know, play that part in class. I shout out the, uh, the short uh, part and then the children uh, shout out uh, the actual definition. And we just play around with that for a little bit uh, until they know the names of the strategies and they can just shout them out uh, in relation to MC Rapper Coda Numble. The six cool strategies for mental addition. Let's now go back to MC Rapper Coda Numble, who's going to go through each of those uh, separate uh, strategies and show you one simple example of each with a little bit of rap and rhyme. Hey everyone, it's me MC, the crazy rapping dude. I'll teach you six cool strategies to get you in the mood. Maths can be perplexing, make you crazy that you're wrong. But none of you employ this phrase, I'll teach you in this song. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? I'm Rapper Code and Numbo. Rap is an awesome strategy that you can always trust. If a number's close to a multiple of 10, round and then adjust. For 35, add 19, you know the thing to do. Add your 20, then take one, the strategy for you. Pat is the perfect strategy for cool mental addition. You take the numbers, all of them, and simply partition. For 35, add 27, add tens, then ones together. So 50 and 12 is 62, you'll feel extremely clever. For co, you don't partition both the numbers, only one. Keep the first number complete, then simply just count on. 35, add 24, imagine a number line. First add 20, then add 4, I'm sure that you'll be fine. Da! For certain numbers, this strategy is a must. If the numbers are fairly close together, double, then adjust. For 35, add 36, don't worry, don't get tense. Double 35, add 1, use your number sense. Finally, it's number time, it's like a magic wand. For calculating's awesome when you spot a number bond. For 35, add 45, no need at all to cry. Add 5 to 35, then double 40 is left to try. If you want a strategy for any situation, the only thing to do, manipulate the calculation. For 48, add 36, you might be quite unsure. So pass two over, now you've got 50 plus 34. Thought I'd better uh, dispense with the glasses. <laughs> what we're now going to do, and the baseball cap, uh, what we're now going to do is play some of the games that I do on courses that um, basically use these strategies from MC Rapper Code and Numbo. The first one is a key stage one game called Digit Card Turnover. All I'm going to do is I'm going to turn over, as it says, uh, six digit cards. I'm going to turn them over uh, an eight, a five, a one, a seven, a two. And the two, we'll start starting with six cards, and all we're going to do basically is find the total by moving the cards around any way we want. I'm going to have a quick uh, go at this one, so I might look at that one straight away and go, oh, number bond, number bond, eight and two. I always encourage the children to shout the strategy they're doing, so number bond, eight and two. We can then put um, those two together, double and adjust. Double five is ten, uh, and seven is twelve. So we've currently got twelve, uh, and ten is twenty-two. Now we've just got two and one, so 22 and three is 25. That's one way. I've now invited Lydia to take part in this one. Uh, we're in the cool shades, a little bit cooler than mine. And what Lydia's now gonna do is she's gonna do an eight card version of uh, digit card turnover. Okay, off you go, Lydia. Okay, so I've got three, seven, two, six, eight, three, Another six and four. I'll just I'll leave that to pause just for a second so everyone can see those numbers. Okay, off you go. Okay, so first I'm going to do seven plus three is a number bond um, and it equals ten. So it's six plus four and eight plus two. So that gives me thirty. Six plus three is nine if you imagine that was a four it'd just be one less so that means it's 39 brilliant well done sometimes you get numbers that actually don't have many number bombs looking at those the only number bomb i can spot now is the seven plus three so this one's going to be a little bit more complex can we use any of the other strategies that we've been developing through rapper code and number to find the total to these 
So we're now challenging you to find the answer using not initial number bonds, but try to manipulate the numbers around, move them around, use other strategies to see what we can come up with. There's loads and loads and loads of possible answers. I was looking at possibly putting the eight and the nine together, double and adjust to make 17. So put the six and the seven together, double and adjust, which gives me 13, and then I've got a number bond. So I've got 13 and 17 is 30. I can also put the three with the three. That's a double, which is six. Another double is 12, and then my eight is 20. So I've got 30 and 20 is 50, and eight is 58. Now that particular game, Digit Card Turnover, is brilliant for children in Key Stage 1, and sometimes in lower Key Stage 2, to get used to just manipulating numbers, finding near doubles especially, uh, and finding number bonds. The other strategies don't come in as much there, the partitioning uh, and the, um, the round and adjust. But occasionally when a nine comes up, uh, again, you could do that strategy of round and adjust. Let's just, for example, take my... Uh, 6 and 7 is 13, I'll let my, get my 20 here, so I've got my 13 uh, and 20 is 33, uh, so I'll do it this way instead, so 6 and 7 is 13, I've then got my number bonds there, which is 20, 20 and 13 is 33, I've then got double 8, which is 16, that's a partition, which gives me 33 and 16 is 49, and then I can round and adjust, 49 add 10 is 59, subtract 1 uh, is 58. The great thing with these is you can move them around in lots of different ways. I could then make that number bond. Uh, seven, is, 7 and 3 is 10. I could put the double 6 together there and put the 8 to make a 20. So I've now got 20 uh, and 10 that is 30. I've now got 9 and 3 is 12 and 8 is 20. So now we've got 20 and 20 is 40. 10 is 50 and 8 is 58. Children love this activity because you can move those calcula calculations around and really play with the numbers. Just got one example here that I'd like you to look at, very similar to the one uh, we've just done. This time with eight numbers, just the idea, just have a look uh, at that particular set of numbers. You can choose any of the strategies or a combination uh, of different ones. What would you do uh, to find the total uh, from these particular numbers? Let's just pause the video for a second, have a look, uh, and then we'll look at a couple of different options. So you've got just two options there that I came up with. Uh, I've tried to colour code it again so you can see how we've done. The first option is a kind of number bonds one, where the 6 and 4 make a 10, the 7 and 3 make a 10. Then we double and adjust the 8 and the 9. That gives us a 17. We put the 3 with that uh, to give us a 20. That just leaves us with a 5. Quite straightforward. 10, 20, and 20 is 40, and 5 is 45. The second example is a real combination of three different strategies and a double as well. We kick off with the six and four, uh, as we did before, but then, probably because they're next to each other, we've got the seven and the eight as a double and a just. Double seven is 14, one is 15, that goes with the five to make 20. We're now on 30, double three makes six, which is 36. Fantastic, what have we got left at the end? A nine, round and a just. 36 add 10 is 46, subtract the one makes 45. There's probably many, many other options on there, but those two uh, really, really stood out. Just keep playing this game. How many cards can we build it up with? Maybe try 10, maybe even try 12. Let's just see uh, the different strategies that we can build up. And it does become a really uh, worthwhile and really good fun game for children in like year two, building up uh, into year three. Shortly, you're going to meet a target board challenge that I've set up uh, on the ready-made maths number wall. But before we do that, I just want to definitely have this opportunity just to think about all six strategies. We're going to use the number 35, and I've just created a series of numbers, uh, deliberate numbers that I've put together. And what I want you to do is just think, if we're employing MC rapper code and number and asking the children to look at individual numbers, I'd just like you to think of, if you were to add 35 to each of those individual numbers there, what strategy would you employ? Some of them is hopefully very obvious. 35 add 19, 35 add 95 should hopefully be quite uh, obvious 35 add 2 uh, as well others there might be quite a few options 35 add 34 35 add 57 you might have quite a few options there and again it might be worth just pausing and thinking which will be the best one which will i choose and is there an alternative each time name the strategy 35 add 19 round and adjust add 20 take one and so on or, or 35 add 19 ra, round and adjust exactly like you do uh, with the children so just pause the video now, have a look at those numbers, and let's see what we come up with. Let's have a look then. There's uh, obviously lots of examples there. I'm not going to go through all of them. It would take far too long. Just to point out a couple, 
Hopefully, you spotted the double and adjust at 35 and 36, uh, and the number bonds at 35 and 55, and 35 and 95. There's also the third one, 35 add two. Probably a lot of people said count on. I really hope nobody's counting on. I hope we had that one just as a known fact. Uh, 35 and seven, again, could be a known fact, or it could be a count on. But if I am going to do a count on, I'm not going to count seven on my fingers, like we said last week. It's going to be 35, add the five, add the two. The two numbers I really want to point out are 57 and 87. So I think on those, there's lots of options. 35 add 57 could be 30 add 50, 5 add 7 as a partition. It could be a count on. I'd probably do 57 add 5 first, then add my 30. But either way around, uh, it would work. And it could also be a round and adjust. 35 add 60, uh, subtract 3. And 35 add 87. Again, you can choose a strategy. Do we partition? 18, 30, 5 and 7. That would work really well. Do we count on? 87 add 5 is 92 and 30 is 122. Do we round the 87 to a 90? Do 35 add 90 and then subtract the 3? Or do we manipulate the calculation? That's what I'd probably choose to do. Rather than round and adjust, I'd just pass 3 over. Let's pass 3 from the 35 over to the 87. We end up with 90 add 32, which is a much uh, more uh, simple calculation to work out. Last but not least, double and adjust or partition on the last one, 35 add 34. Most people would think, oh, it's an ear double. Actually, it is, but it's actually just as easy to do 30 and 30 at 5 and 4. The whole point is, it's your choice. Another really cool game that Rappacoda Number introduces is the Mega Board. Now, we've been using the Mega Board all week as part of the uh, Ready Made Maths uh, Number Board challenges. We're now going to call this the Rappacoda Number Board. Again, it is a bit, a, a bit, a bit silly, obviously, to take the glasses off now, uh, but. It's really enjoyable for the children to do, just to play the game and name the strategy. We're going to look at the number board now. I'm going to take the number 45, and we're going to have the number 45 mega challenge. I'll replace the 45 with the 44 over here. And what I'm going to do now is we're, I'm going to basically set you this challenge to do at home uh, and have a little practice. Uh, I've got the 45, I'll just put that, um, just put, it, put it up there, actually just cover up that strategy for a minute. There's the number 45. I'd like you to look at every other number on the board and say to yourself, if I've got to add 45 to every single other number, what strategy would I use? Now, I'm also going to give you a, a copy of a downloadable uh, sheet that you can fill in, which has got the five strategies, plus uh, there's also a manipulate the calculation uh, on there. And you can use that sheet uh, to fill it in, or alternatively, just do it as a jotting activity uh, at home. So, as a, just as a simple example, I'm just going to take maybe the first... Um, four numbers and just talk through different strategies that we could use. Um, 45 add 67. I look at that, I'm going to go number bond. Straight away, I've got a 60 and a 40 is 100. And then there's a double and adjust there for 5 and 7. Uh, that gives me 12. That's 112. 45 add 29. Round and adjust. 45 add 30. 55, 65, 75. Subtract 1 uh, is 74. Or manipulate the calculation i'm just going to pass one over and it's now going to be 44 at 30 that is 74. the next one 45 at 27. for that one i'm going to partition 40 and 20 is 60 and 5 and 7 is 12. very very straightforward 132 add 45 count on 132 add 40 is 172 add, um, add 5 is 177. Another simple count on, 45 add 10. So that's an example with the first few. Sometimes number bonds will jump out at you. Sometimes double and adjust will jump out. There are a couple of numbers on there that may well work uh, for double and adjust. There should be quite a lot of partitions, quite a lot of opportunities around and adjust. Just have a look at all the numbers, play around. The world's your oyster, really. You can choose your own strategy. So I'm going to pause the video now for about five seconds while you can have a look at that. You pause your video uh, and have a little play with those numbers. Well, I hope you've enjoyed uh, the first of the Rappacoda Numbo sessions. We are going to continue with Rappacoda Numbo uh, tomorrow with a few other little games. We're actually going to build it up. It'll be more of a Key Stage 2 uh, day tomorrow. We will obviously be 
uh, reinforcing the key stage one strategies, but we're mainly going to be developing uh, the, the rapper code of number activities. We're going to look at a song that develops it as well, uh, and we're also going to be, build up uh, digit card and dice activities uh, to a slightly higher level. So try and remember it as you're doing the homework from tonight. MC, manipulate the calculation, do anything you want. Round and adjust, add 20, take one, and so on. Partition, count on, double and adjust. And my favourite one, use those number bonds. I've enjoyed playing the part of Rapper Code Number today. I probably won't be turning up in disguise tomorrow, and I'll just turn up tomorrow and do the activities uh, as normal. But if you <clears throat> are working with children, anybody in school wants to play that role, that's a great way to start. What I would then suggest you do, which I, I, I used to do in my own class you know, many, many, many years ago, uh, and also when I used to work as a local authority consultant, is I would create rapper code and number cards where we have MC, ra, pa, ko, da, and number written on separate cards. They'd be in the centre of the table. As the children spot a strategy, they choose the right card, they put it in front of them and say, I'm playing da, I'm doing ra, I'm doing number. Uh, and as they play the activity, the aim of the game was can they try and get rid of all the cards by using all uh, of the different strategies. Another alternative is to, is to have rapper code and number baseball caps and things like that so they can put the baseball cap on when they're using any of the individual strategies. Just make it your own and have fun with it. Anyway, uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed myself today. I say I won't, won't be too many uh, dressing up activities uh, in the future, uh, but I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow uh, for rapper code and number part two. You may also have noticed the two cool dudes sitting behind me uh, throughout that activity. Uh, there is a reason for that. Uh, they're two of my, my son's teddy bears from uh, many, many years ago. Uh, the one on the left uh, is called Lumpo, and the one on the right is called Humbo. Uh, they're both dressed up, and they're referring to themselves for the day as Rappacoda Lumpo and Rappacoda Humbo. So well done, boys. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the activities uh, as well. Thanks very much. Uh, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's training session. Uh, and especially meeting MC Rappacoda Numbo uh, for the first time. Um, some version of MC Rappacoda Numbo will be back tomorrow uh, to look at the more Key Stage 2 uh, style activities um, that extend what we've been doing today. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. As I've said before, please do follow me on Twitter to get all the uh, extra information. Uh, please subscribe to the Ready Made Maths uh, YouTube channel uh, and check out the website as well. I uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Tuesday the 28th of April. Thank you very much.